me take a few moments to just read a few quotes to you from the magisterial reformers of the 16th century and let you decide for yourself. Here are a few observations that I've included in my book uh, that, that come from the pen of Martin Luther. Luther says this, quote, the Holy Spirit himself and God, the creator of all things, is the author of this book. Another quote, Scripture, although also written of men, is not of men nor from men, but from God. Again, he who would not read these stories in vain must firmly hold that Holy Scripture is not human, but divine wisdom. Again, the word must stand, for God cannot lie, and heaven and earth must go to ruins before the most insignificant letter or tittle of his word remains unfulfilled. And then he cites Augustine. St. Augustine says in his letter to St. Jerome, quote, I have learned to hold only the Holy Scripture inerrant. Now that's not Luther quoting a 17th century scholar. That's Luther quoting Augustine from the end of the 4th century, where Augustine says, I have learned to hold only the Scripture inerrant. Again, he says, in the books of St. Augustine, one finds many passages which flesh and blood have spoken. And concerning myself, I must also confess that when I talk apart from the ministry at home, at table, or elsewhere, I speak many words that are not God's word. That is why St. Augustine, in a letter to Jerome, has put down a fine axiom the, that only Holy Scripture is to be considered inerrant. So we see that Luther <coughs> hardly hedges. Another passage I could quote from Luther in which he says, the Scriptures never err. Now, I don't know that Luther ever used the word inerrancy. He just used the word inerrant and said that the Bible never errs, which is the very essence of the concept of inerrancy. So I think it's a fool's errand to try to argue that the reformers of the 16th century were strangers and foreigners to the idea of the inspiration and the authority and the infallibility and the inerrancy of sacred scripture. But one of the other important points of sola scriptura in the 16th century, which has become a very important uh, principle for historic evangelicalism, was a hermeneutical principle. Now, the scriptures, uh, the reformers not only confessed their view of what the scriptures are and where they came from, but they also express their views on how the Bible is to be interpreted and who has the right and responsibility to read it. One of the radical things that happened in the Reformation was the translation of the Bible into the vernacular, taking it out of the hands of those who were able to read Latin and or Greek or Hebrew and putting it in the hands of people who could only read in their native tongues. As Luther translated the Bible into German and Wycliffe translated the Bible into England, English and so on. And in some cases, the people who did that paid for it with their lives. Because the principle that was asserted in historic evangelicalism was the principle, first of all, of private interpretation. Meaning that every Christian has the right and the responsibility to read the Bible for themselves. And they have the right to interpret it for themselves. Now that was heard by Rome, as witnessed in the fourth session of Trent, to mean that the Protestants were giving license to the rank and file church member not only to read the Bible for themselves, but to distort it at, at will. And of course, the reformers uh, were horrified at that idea. They said every Christian has the right to interpret the Bible for themselves, but no Christian ever has the right to misinterpret it 
or to distort it according to their own whims or their own prejudices. But the principle was a private interpretation was based upon an, another principle, which was the principle of the perspicuity of Scripture, which is a $3 word for clarity. Now, Luther said there are many parts of Scripture that are difficult to handle, and that's why we need teachers in the church and commentaries and all of that. But that the basic message, that message that is necessary for a person to understand and grasp is plain for any person to see it. And when, when Luther talked about giving the Bible to the, to the laity, the church said, if you do that, that'll open up a floodgate of iniquity because people will start creating all kinds of horrible distortions, which is exactly what happened. But Luther said, if that is the case, and if a floodgate of iniquity is opened by opening the pages of the Bible to people, so be it. But the message that is clear is so important. It's the, it, it contains the message of our salvation. It is so important and so clear that we'll take the risks of all of the distortions and all of the heresies that go with that to make sure that the central message of Scripture is heard. And as a result of this affirmation of Sola Scriptura, the Bible was put into the church, and the reading of the Scriptures and preaching from the Scriptures became central to the liturgy and to the worship of historic Protestantism.